which is hit this record button. Thank you so much, Stephanie Bowman, my daughter. The mission is leadership today and we shall lead together. So uh, thank you everyone for joining in on this power hour. And uh, I will restrain myself to about just a minute, 30 seconds apiece on these two individuals that is going to share because if we do, I could spend the entire hour introducing them and then that would be it. But here's what I wanna say first. We're gonna go backwards. So we save the best for last. But the ladies last because ladies work best. I'm gonna start with Mr. Vinnie Cochran. 30 years of military leadership. And in that 30 years, he retired and wrote a book on leadership. Taking 30 years and compressing it into seven simple steps. The man is a true visionary. And how I noticed is because years ago he painted a vision for me. And I was able to see where my life was going. And I took the action step that he taught, which is in that book. And I got there and beyond. And now we are doing the same together. If you're hearing some noise in the background, that's our old actual boss, the OG, the original gangster of Obama and Anna. That's Miracle there. <laughs> and she's calling her mom because she is a very jealous child. And that's okay. We love her the same. Number two is my CEO of Global Operations, Ms. Fasana Patel. Well, Vinnie Cochran is not only my best friend and favorite um, person on the planet, he just happens to be, for the OB Mastermind, our global leadership authority. And Fasana Patel, oh, this young lady, some of you have heard me share about her before, but as I was scouting for a new CEO, and because my wife originally, the, the original CEO, she says, I'm not doing anything anymore. She just wanted to raise kids. I didn't mind that. And you know what happens when a woman is raising kids. I have to participate. It's a good way to participate with that with your wife. So it was a good thing. I said, okay. But I needed a CEO that can do three things. Comprehend the same way my wife does. Move and keep me accountable. And more importantly than anything else, this one last point. The person has to be ambitious just as much as I was too. And I found such a person in Ms. Fasana Patel. We started working together. And in six months, we built that company to from zero to 335%. That alone, ladies and gentlemen, is litmus in itself that, you know what, <laughs> talent. So by putting the best leader together with the best leadership that I know and learned from, I'm just in the middle of the sandwich learning from this generation and the previous generation. I'm the happiest guy in the world. And now you all get to know why Without any further ado, and that's Miracle. She's sitting. She wants to come say hi. Say hello. Hi, Miracle. Without. Hi, Fasana. Hi, Miracle. Look at that. Hi, Fasana. Hi. So, we're on a first name basis now. Right? Hi, Miracle. Hi, because she knows some names. That's, that's what's going to keep her plugged in. That's great. So, without any further ado, this is a family business as we build together. If you're catching this on Facebook or any other medium or the recording, we love you. Sorry you're not here live, but you'll still get some love from Ms. Fasana Patel and Mr. Vinnie Cochran. And all I want to do is remove my camera and stay quiet for the next hour so I can take some notes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the leadership team of the OB Mastermind and the new phase that we're heading in with the Sarah, Mr. Vinnie Cochran and Ms. Fasana Patel. Thank you, Appreciate you. <laughs> well, we are here for a, a what we hope to be a very um, transforming 45 minutes to an hour. Um, we are so blessed to uh, have Obam and Anna as good friends, mentors, uh, teammates, whatever you want to call it, you know, to bring all of us together so that we can just share information. Uh, to help each each other grow, um, and myself and Fasana, we're just thrilled to be here today. And you know, we had a conversation a little bit early, um, which was meant to talk about what we were going to talk about today, but we never even got to that. Um, so what we came up with, as Fasana put it, I'm just going to lead off, and we're going to do a little dance. So should I say we're just going to have a conversation? Um, because some of you have heard me speak before. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is a quote from Socrates, um, who says, I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make you think. And I, I'm hoping that's what we do today. We're not here to teach you anything, force anything down your throats. We're just here to 
totally open up some channels of communication, open up your mind just a little bit and share some of our experiences. Um, so with that, I figure we'll get started out with, you know, Obama already introduced Fasad and, and, you know, through her accolades out there and she has many, many accolades in business, um, so on and so forth. But I want to start out with a question to Fasana, you know, and the question is, who is Fasana? Oh, that is a good one, Vinny. So Fasana is, Fasana is a student of life. She is a philosopher. She is a sociologist. She is a holistic practitioner who always chooses to operate from a place of love. She is someone who knows better so that when people like Vinnie Cochran or Obama Bowen speak, you have a notebook and you write notes down, you take notes because when you have wisdom that is being given to you on a silver platter, I mean, it doesn't matter what age Fasana becomes or what age she was in the past. What matters is that she, and Anna's probably laughing because Fasana's speaking of herself in third person like we talked about yesterday, <laughs> but Fasana's the type of person who is very present, is very present to the fact that life is a long-term process of growth and learning. And it is such a privilege and honor and pleasure to be working alongside the people that God has allowed me to share space with. And, you know, Fasana is someone who wants to see us all win. She is going to be your energetic cheerleader. She is going to inspire you by leading by example to the best of her ability. You know, if you're really close to her and she's having a moment, she may need to call you and vent or just cry for a second, but then she'll put a smile back on her face and continue along her journey. That's who Fasana is. Awesome. <laughs> See, again, everybody always wants to get to the meat and potatoes about, you know, business success and everything. But again, I, I always feel it's, it's so important that we actually know the individuals that we're actually, you know, getting information from, um, because somebody can come out with some, you know, phenomenal information. Uh, at least we may think it's phenomenal information, but if these people that are putting out this information are just not good people at heart, um, then it kind of takes away from the information that they're putting out there. So I know I'm extremely happy to be surrounded with individuals like you, Fasana. Um, you know, the team that we have you know, the growth that we share. And, you know, I think I'm pretty much the same way. I think that's why we connect so much and so well. Um, you know, I'm a people person, a, a, a giver, so to speak, um, and somebody who likes to help individuals in any way that I can. And sometimes people say that that may be to your detriment, um, but I never think that way. You know, I, I never think of what that outcome is going to be as long as I, I believe I can you know, lend a hand when a hand is needed, um, help a fellow person out regardless of what the circumstance is. Um, you know, I think that's how we grow as a, as a society. And right now, you know, if you go anywhere on the news, for those of you who do get the news, I do very rarely, um, this is something I think we all need in society right now is for individuals to simply help one another. And that help might just be a you know, a phone call, a smile, uh, a simple hello or something um, that we that we all need every now and again. Um, and I think that all ties into leadership. You know, and there's so many different forms of it. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, who are you going to follow somewhere, but, you know, who are you going to look up to for, for different things that you may you may need in life. So, Let's have our conversation, Ms. Fasana. And I, I wrote down a couple. I wrote down a couple questions, um, but I'm sure we're going to have some questions from those that are watching also. Um, so I guess one of my my questions for you as a a entrepreneur, a a CEO, a, a business person in general, 
um, being a female, because I, I think I think that's that's something people need to recognize. Because um, I, I personally don't think that females in general get recognized as much as they should. And I know the struggles that that females go through um, in terms of business. I, I you know again I have a background in the military, thirty years, and people look at it, you know, like other organizations it's a it's a boys club it's a men's club but we have phenomenal women who serve um, we have phenomenal women in fire departments police departments all of these individuals who serve and it's the same in business you know we have wonderful women who are in business doing great things but they sometimes don't get or a lot of times don't get the recognition that they deserve um, so I want you to tell us you know number one what what do you feel are some of your biggest strengths in business and why do you think or feel that sometimes that may be overlooked because you are a woman? Mm, wow. He's just going in today, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, Vinny. Great question. Thank you for asking. You know, what sometimes we overlook is the fact that men and women were biologically programmed different. We're wired different, right? I know that a lot of times people have said over time that women are known to overthink and complain and you know whine and bitch about stuff. But the truth is, is that we're highly emotional creatures. We're highly emotional beings. We are nurturers at heart. And when you look at traditionally how business has always been done, you know, it's, it's taken me a long time to really build my own character and to really accept myself. Annie Koshi spoke about this in her ninja training yesterday. Really accept myself authentically for who I am and never, ever selling myself out. I have never sold my soul out ever in this lifetime. And I say that because as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, you know, we're responsible for learning how to become Jedis, learning how to become ninjas, learning how to become effective communicators so that we can clearly communicate from our authentic being, from our heart space, and get our points across without being or feeling icky in the process. You know, and so historically speaking, business has been done in a very masculine format. And I believe, you know, as a, a spiritual teacher, I like to say that a lot of the ways that we used to do business, and this applies to you regardless of your gender. So this is for men and women alike. It's time for us. This is why I joined this team, right? It's time for us to shift that paradigm and remove the toxic programming and patterns of how business used to be done so that it's done from a more authentic, soulful, heart-centered place. That's why I love working with each and every single one of the people on this call right now. So my biggest strengths would be that I am a nurturer, that I always come from a place of love, that I'm looking to always create a win-win-win dynamic with everyone that I associate myself with, that I'm caring, that I'm compassionate, that I'm brilliant, that I'm smart, that I'm highly intellectual, and best of all, that I'm aware of the fact that as a human being, that there may be times when I'm out of my comfort zone that my ego might come in and try and steal the show or become the driver of my bus, right? And so, Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a smart woman, but the thing is, is that I don't know what I don't know. So I'm very, very conscious of the fact that if there's something that I'm looking to achieve, or if there is a vision that I'm looking to manifest, working with people like yourself, like Obama, like Anna, Annie, Stephanie, Omar, and the rest of our team, Rob, right? Carrie, Debbie, Alka, I can name so many people, but the truth is, is that this safe space that we've created within this family dynamic of all of us building multiple businesses, not just one, but multiple businesses that allow us to express ourselves, 
in creative ways that fulfill our souls. Yeah, this, all of this, all of this is my strength. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. And I, again, I think these are the things that, that people need to, uh, to hear. And I hope, I hope you guys out there are, are taking great notes. I'm taking notes um, because, you know, one of the things she, she mentioned is, you know, has she said, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And the only way any of us are going to grow and achieve the things that we want in life, I believe, is to seek out the knowledge, seek out those people um, who, again, been there, done that, and can show you how to do it. Now, that can be tricky at times because, you know, some people are going to come at you with ulterior motives for wanting to help you. Um, so I think it's, it's very important that you, you find those individuals that are genuinely, you know, in line with what you want, what your purpose in life is, um, and have a genuine willingness to help you for no other reason than to help you achieve what it is that you want to achieve. And again, we, we're going to talk a lot about our family here that's, you know, that we refer to. And you know, that, I think that's what, what has really brought us all together and what keeps us together is that, you know, Regardless of what our different individual businesses may be, you know, I know that if I needed something from, you know, anyone in the family to help me get to another level, um, that they're going to be there to either help me or point me in the right direction. Um, and again, that's the type of circle that I think you need in order to, you know, achieve any level of leadership. Um, because a, a leader, you know, if you really look at it, a leader has had to been a good follower at one point and a good leader will continue to be a good follower uh, because again, it's a lifelong journey. You know, when you believe that you've made it to the top, that's when you stop growing and that's when you are ultimately going to start dying probably pretty quick. Um, you know, to me, there, there's no, there's really no top of the mountain. You know, when, when I get to the top of the mountain, I believe that's when I'm going to be knocking on heaven's doors. Um, I believe he's going to open up the doors and show me another mountain to climb. Um, because, again, I'm still going to be continuous, continually learning. And, uh, again, with individuals, you know, like this family that we have, um, it's just a, it's a phenomenal um, thing. And it, it helps you with your leadership when you surround yourself with people who have different leadership qualities and abilities that you don't necessarily have. And I think that's where a lot of people, again, I think go down the wrong path when they believe they've got it all together. Um, it, it's never all together. Um, there's always going to be something more that you can learn. So with that, again, wrote down a, a few things um, so let's see. Um, let's look at a snapshot of the path it took for you, Fasana, to get from you know, where you were, you know, when you were just thinking about becoming this, this global CEO to where you are right now, you know, living in your purpose and living out your dreams right now. You know, let's take a, a little snapshot at the path it took for you to get from there to where you are now. I want you all to take and pay close attention at how Vinny Cochran is training me and how he's communicating behind the scenes to me. See how he said snapshot? That means Fasana, keep it simple. <laughs> 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 I love you, Vinny. Oh my goodness. Um, oh boy. So my truth and how I would describe the journey for me has always been me looking to step into um, and continue to lead by example and, and just be the best version of myself no matter what projects or organization or community I was involved in. Um, Self-love and self-respect are two huge components that I have been seeking inside of myself, within myself for a very long time. And I have always wanted to be accepted and acknowledged and 
um, you know, mostly accepted for who I am authentically because I'm the type of person that will never ask to take anything from you unless I can serve you in, in exchange. There always has to be an equal exchange between us it doesn't matter if it's a personal relationship. It doesn't matter if it's a professional relationship or not. So getting to where I am today is an idea that I had in my mind since the age of 15. I'll be 32 in December. So you guys do the math. You'll be able to tell how long I've consciously been seeking this, um, this, this family, this community, this tribe, this um, support, right? Because Venny and I were chatting earlier today and we understand that you cannot tell a big vision or a big dream to a small mind. And without insulting anyone out there, let me preface what I'm saying. If I'm this 15 year old bright eyed girl who was also battling with her own depression, obesity, body shaming issues, um, abandonment issues, insecurity, and all this other mental and emotional stuff, right? How am I supposed to change the world? That's always just been my focus. It's always been, how do I become someone who can create the type of influence and impact in this world so I'm leaving the world a better place? When I thought of legacy, Vinny, legacy to me didn't only exclusively mean, you know, um, millions or billions of dollars in accounts for my future generations. It meant me transferring the intellectual property and the energetic property of who I've learned to be and choose to become on a daily basis to my future generations, right? To my ge genealogical downline, if you will, right? To the people that I'm here to be an example. Like when I'm a grandmother, I'm gonna look at my grandchildren and know that because I did the work, internal, internal work and the external work, that that's legacy to me, right? That's fulfillment of my life's purpose. So it's been a journey, <laughs> but, but being um, in this space and sharing this um, platform with people like yourself, people that, and I, I'm going to take this moment, you guys, I told you, I take every moment possible to brag on Vinnie Cochran because you guys don't know what I know, what I've been blessed to know by spending so much time in space. Someone who is so down to earth, so humble, so pure of heart and giving in nature and someone who sometimes doesn't even realize the power and the impact that he has on the people around him. And so I'm going to stop there because I could literally just spend the rest of this hour sharing with you the character of this amazing man that I get to share this particular platform with today. And, you know, I'm going to stop because I seriously will make myself cry and like Benny back to you. <laughs> Well, as y'all can see, we, we go on and on because I, you know, I can sit here and brag about Fasana all day long. That's why it's always a, an honor and a pleasure to, you know, be able to just communicate with her and again, pass on some knowledge and information. But I hope y'all caught something that she said, you know, when she was um, describing her path. You know, number one, I hope you all understand that no, she's still a very young lady, um, but her journey started, as she said, when she was 15 years old. You know, that is very, very important um, because to me, it, it just simply, it really goes to the heart of something I truly believe in, which is, you know, all of us at some point, and I hope sooner the better going back to your childhood and really tapping into the things that you thought about wanting to be when you were children. You know, the fact that she, she tapped into it at a very young age, 15, and stayed on track with it is something that's totally different from the average person out there. You know, a lot of us, and I, I put myself in that category because I did it, you know, I allowed, you know, those individuals that I, I hung around when I was a young teen, you know, when I got into the military, I allowed, you know, different family influences to talk me out of, so to speak, you know, the things that I dreamed about or dreamt about when I was a 
a, a young individual. Um, luckily, I was able to tap back into that at a later age and again, go all the way back to, I believe it was a, a eighth or ninth grade guidance counselor um, who, who really told me, you know, the things that I'm doing now, she actually saw that in me way back in the eighth and ninth grade. Um, but had it not been for my ability to go back and tap into that younger me and uncover the things that I wanted back then, you know, I would have never been able to be in a position that I am now. Um, so again, I think it's very, very important that we all, you know, go back to your childhood, regardless of how good or bad, because some of us believe we have bad childhoods. Um, they are not as bad as you actually believe them to be if you really tap into the heart of yourself as a child because that's when I believe again you are at your purest you know so nothing that anybody said or did to you could really change you know the heart you had as a child and if we go back there you know you can discover or uncover what I believe your true passions in life are because you know that's when it was clear to you the most you were a child when your mind wasn't cluttered with all the crap that was downloaded into it, you know, as we got older. So I think that was phenomenal, you know, how Fasana was able to tap into that at 15 and stay on course, which is another thing um, to get to where she is now. And as you, you can see, she's got a, a lot more journey to go to achieve and to help so many people that I know. Um, she is going to be helping in, in the future. So, and then we're going to go back and forth here. Um, and again, feel free, throw out some questions if, if you have them. Um, but let's, let's look at why or what made you, at 15 specifically, you know, what made you decide that this is what you wanted to be or the person that you wanted to be? Um, what was there one thing or was there um, a set of circumstances or again just the thing that you were able to tie into a, as a, a young teen that this is what you wanted you know out of life mm, that's a really good question and I just have to give you a shout out for bringing up some inner child conversation on this call that was beautiful I was like do you all see how we're having multi-dimensional levels and layers to our conversation? And it doesn't matter what, what part of your journey you're at, like you'll be welcomed here and embraced here. Benny, oh my goodness. Um, so most of you know that I choose to speak in a very um, loving and spiritual way. And that that is how I reprogrammed myself to be authentic to who I know I am, right? As a child of God, as, you know, a woman of faith, as someone who truly does believe that love does heal all. And whether that's, I'm not talking about the love of someone else towards you, that's great. Human connection is something we all crave at our core. I'm talking about the love that you have for yourself, right? And accepting every piece and parts of what makes up who you are as a whole and complete being. And truthfully, Venny, I mean, when I was young, I, I grew up in between two religions. And so I didn't have the anchor of God in my life strong enough, strong enough for me. And because of that, I was always bouncing back and forth from different, you know, religious philosophies or teachings. And I was confused. I didn't understand a lot about what was happening, both in my head and my understanding of religion, for example, or what God is or was at that point in my life. And I also didn't understand why I was in the social dynamic, let's say, of my upbringing. I didn't understand why my parents didn't communicate. I didn't understand why they didn't get along. I didn't understand why I couldn't have access to my father. Right. And everything that I experienced in my um, in my childhood led me to really starting to have like real conversations in my teenage years. I remember being about 13 
And I love my mom so much. You know, she's my wonder woman. She's my superwoman. She's the woman who taught me how to be strong and independent and be a fighter, you know, be a warrior. Like that's where I got that from. And, um, fast forward to today. I mean, all I've ever wanted was to understand parts of myself from my childhood. I remember being a kid and bossing around all my friends and being this total control freak, right? And always wanting to be the leader and, and be, be listened to, be heard. And because I was just so motivated to do things my way, right? And I know that so many of you out there listening, like you've gone through something very similar to this in your own journey. And when I started getting older, I turned 15, one of my family friends at the time took my mom, my sister and I out to the keg. And the keg is a steakhouse here in Canada, for those of you who don't know, right? And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classy place to go. It's an expensive restaurant to me at that time. So I'm just, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, this feels good. I like this. Like, ooh, this is my introduction to opulence in my life, right? Luxury. And I'm pretty simple at the core. You give me some green juice, you give me some like ca carrot salad and water, maybe a couple of notepads, an iPad and a book or two, like I'm content, I can keep myself busy, right? But in that experience, I was taught unconsciously what a different level of freedom looked like in life. And that was by becoming an entrepreneur. So my path and staying true to myself has been a continual journey of embracing all of the blessings, all of the goodness, all of the divine guidance and angels, people like Veni, people like Obam, people like everyone else in my life that see my potential and that help me exercise that potential, actualize that potential um, versus me just doing it all by myself. So you know, last year, Benny, and you know this, and you're a big part of this, you know, our company, the OB Mastermind that was started was inspired by you. It was for you. And the gratitude and the love that Anna and Obam have for you is shared now amongst myself and every other person in our tribe. Because by you, and look, the, the sun kind of came out. Did you see that? You saw that, right? <laughs> Didn't change any lighting, I promise. Like, that's great. So um, that all being said, it's like my concept of, it's not my concept, but it's my concept to me that I happen to be talking about all the time that resonates with people, right? This concept, our concept of divine orchestration, this is the perfect story. We are the perfect love story, right? This is how it was supposed to happen. And Venny gave me a pep talk this morning because I was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about, he's like, listen, this is gonna be more massive than you ever imagined or dreamed of. So you better buckle up and get ready. He didn't say it like that, but that's how I chose to <laughs> interpret it, right? So I, I can't explain and I can't take all of the credit for you know, doing all of the work because had it not been for my mentors, for my colleagues, for my students in life, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have realized that in order for me to exercise the type of leadership because it's not control, it's leadership that I desire to exercise. It involved me humbling myself, right? And, and you've seen a lot of that happen with me in the past year alone. It involved me opening myself up to trusting deeper, to having better faith, right? And, and really just um, surrendering to the process and receiving all of the, the good and the abundance that I've been expecting for a long time now. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I'm just sitting here, I'm, I'm taking notes and, you know, trying to come up with other questions. But what I really, I guess, I need everybody to truly, I guess, understand. And the reason I asked Fasana that question about her path is because we're all, we're all on a path to something. Um, the issue is, you know, did you design the path you're on or are you choosing to go on the path that you want to be on or are you following someone else's path? Um, and I think the minute we figure out, number one, what path we're on and what, what the goal at the end is, 
is when we can actually figure out, you know, how fast we're going to get there and what, you know, what people we need to latch on to to help us get there. Um, because again, we're, we're all going to have some struggles. Um, it's going to happen, you know, during regardless of what path you pick, um, you're going to have some struggles. Um, but those struggles that you have, you know, the bump in the road, the redirection or the misstep, you know, all it does is I think navigate you back on course. You know, a lot of us think that we're being knocked off course by these things. And I personally think all of those bumps, all of those struggles that you are actually going through is actually designed to put you back on course. Because again, if you tie it all back into going back to when you were a child, you know, when you, in my opinion, were placed here for a specific reason, you know, with that, that open heart, that open mind to receive what I believe someone above us, you know, is implanting into us as we grow and we progress, we get off course. And sometimes it might be that, that slap in the face or that kick in the behind that we view as a struggle that we need to get us back on course. And for some of us, it takes a little bit longer than normal, but eventually, you know, we'll get back to that place and get on that azimuth, as we say in the military, you know, we'll get back on the right azimuth to get to the destination um, that we need to be. And it's going to take groups like this. You know, we have social media now where, you know, you can, you can look at people, you can follow their stories, and you can pick out certain things, you know, that from them are inspiring to you. Um, and of course, we all have individuals that they don't even know that they are your mentors. Um, those silent mentors that are out there. Um, what I recommend to each and every person out there, that those silent mentors that you have, you know, that have been helping you along your journey in one way or another, um, that whenever you have the ability, at least reach out to those individuals and, and let them know in some way, shape, form, or fashion, um, because it, it's really going to be uplifting to you, um, I believe, because in some instances, you know, that may be the very person that can literally and physically help you get over a hurdle that you may be going through. So instead of watching from afar and letting those individuals be the mentors that they are, reach out to them. Um, let them know what they have done for you in your life and you will have no idea what could possibly come from that. Um, so with that being said, you know, we all look at, at different things you know, to help us get to the next level. And I know, you know with this family that I'm a part of now, um, we have what some refer to as some super nerds. And as, as a young kid, again, I went back and I thought of a time when that was my nickname, you know, for a while. You know, they called me a nerd, and I used to get offended by that. Um, because even as a young kid, although I didn't read a lot, I learned a lot. I took in a lot of information. I did a lot of writing and reading my, you know, the stuff that I wrote down based off the information that I took in. Um, and now as an adult, you know, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you know, as, as a leader, I do a lot of reading um, to help me get to the different stages um, that I want to get to in life. So to Fasana, you know, back to you with the question, you know, what are, let's say, one or two books, you know, that you have recently read or currently reading um, that you know are, is going to help you get to where you ultimately want to be? <laughs> Well, I could tell you, but I'd rather show you these two, books right here. <laughs> these two books right here. If you put these two books together, if you read these two books, you'll understand me in every way possible. So I have Today is the Day by Oban Bowen, obviously. And I have this book, the, Divine, the Law of Divine Compensation by Marianne Williamson. She's been a huge, um, uncon I, I don't, I don't want to say unconscious, but indirect mentor to me. Um, like you were mentioning, Vinny, and 
you know, with what we are creating here, right, interdependently, with what we've all come together to consciously create together, I think it's such a beautiful space because I never used to think that more than one leader could really come together and serve the way that we do as a family, as a community. And, you know, I look at you, I look at your, your posturing, your brand, your, the way you communicate, how I'm so in alignment, you know, with not only the words that you speak, but with you energetically. And um, I'm totally going to flip the question and ask you, by the way, what your two top books are, just so you know. <laughs> um, but I just, I, I just, I have to, I have to express to everyone out there that like, if you're the way that I was in my last season, and if you think that you have to do it all by yourself in order to be accepted and respected, I just want this to be a, a universal reminder for you or a news flash, if it's the first time you're hearing this, that you absolutely never need to feel like you're alone. Because yes, I could say something spiritual, like God is always with you, God is within us, right? We, you know, and when you find true like-minded and growth-minded individuals, like the people that we've been, you know, mentioning here on this call and like people like Vinny and myself, who have such an open mind and an open heart to really serve at the highest level, you have to remember that your level of trusting other people to help you with where you're looking to go, it starts within you. So only when I started to open myself up to actually trusting people to help me and opening myself up to sharing my vulnerability with Obam, with Anna, with Vinny, and with a few of the other people on this call, was I really able to take my own healing to the next level? It was really in just the expression of where I am currently in my journey without having the pride, without having the ego, the walls up, the layers of protection. Because for those of you listening who understand this conversation, you know those walls are like ironclad walls, right? They're, there's like a moat around us sometimes. Nobody can get in. And we've, we've programmed ourselves to be that way. And so... Yeah, Vinny, what are your top two books? <laughs> <laughs> well, of, of course, you know, uh, Dr. Obama Bowen's book, you know, Today is the Day, there's something that I read on a regular basis. Um, but like you said, I guess I can, I can show you <laughs> better than I can tell you because I'm sitting at my desk. And right now, you know, I'm reading the, if you can see that, you know. Ooh, Secrets, Secrets of the Millionaire, millionaire Mind. Mind and The Go-Giver. And uh, this book, The Go-Giver, I'll tell you, um, you know, and I think it kind of ties directly into the teachings of our mentor, you know, Dr. Obama Bowen, when he talks about laws. And, and The Go-Giver, they're talking about five, what they consider um, five laws of stratospheric success. Um, and it's a deep dive into the law of value, uh, the law of compensation, uh, the law of influence, the law of authenticity, and the law of uh, receptivity, um, which wow. is I, I really, um, as some of you who, who know me, know I had to learn how to be receptive of certain things, receptive of, of compliments and, and things of that nature. Um, so again, I'm just a, a sponge when it, when it comes to you know, new information, um, so that I can grow to this day into the person that I believe I, I was put here for, um, which is to help as many people, you know, as I possibly can. And I don't think I can do that um, without pouring into myself um, and, you know, being able to again, increase my, my foundation or build up my foundation even stronger by, you know, inputting new information in. Um, because Again, we've talked about it on different calls, different people on our power hours have all said it. Again, we all have a supercomputer. You know, our brains are supercomputers. And the unfortunate thing, unlike a regular computer, you know, you can delete information. You know, you can wipe the database clean on your computer. All right, we can't do that, you know, in our minds and in our supercomputers. Uh, we can only put in new information you know, that will be readily available for us when we need it, um, which sometimes mean sometimes we have to dig deep 
and pull out some of the old information that we still actually need. Again, going back to the, you know, your childhood thoughts, your childhood memories, you know, it's good to go back there again so that you can pull those ideas and thoughts to the forefront of your mind so that when you think of it again, it's right there. You know, your mind doesn't worry about, you know, going through the cluttered mess of all the information you have stored from the time you were born until the time or the age that you are now. So just know that, you know, for the young ones out there, you know, your mind probably don't seem as cluttered now, but as you get older, you know, and more information is dumped into you or you allow to be put into your brain, um, you're going to want to manage that a whole lot better. Um, because, you know, with age comes wisdom, but with age, you know, also comes a whole lot of other crap <laughs> um, that, that you're going to have to learn how to sort through to be, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Love it. Hey, Vinny. Yes. I have a question for you. <laughs> Inquiring minds would like to know, aka mine. <laughs> so I know other people will have this question too. So you have been displaying um, such strong leadership for decades now, right? Decades, like it's, it's so admirable. Give us three secrets or three tips that we can apply to our journeys that will help us with long-term leadership. Wow. <laughs> that's, that, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, cause they, I mean, there's, there's so many different things, but I, I think the first is, um, seeing everyone, you know, as they are and accepting them for who they are. Um, I think with that, um, that, that can take you a long way, not only in your journey, um, but in someone else's journey. Um, sometimes I think we, when we meet people, we see people. Um, we have expectations of individuals um, based off of the information we have in our brains instead of just accepting individuals for where they are. Um, and then, you know, if they need assistance or they have something that can help you, you know, regardless of the point in their life where they may be, you know, you, you meet them where they are. Um, so that not necessarily a secret, but I think it's something that so many people um, don't do um, that can help again both themselves and that person who you may be meeting for the first time. Um, another thing I think um, is learning to control, or I guess the word is control your attitude. Um, if, if there's one thing that I think is very important in leadership, is it's your attitude, um, which to sum it up is how you respond to things, you know, that are going to pop up. Um, Cause again, there's going to be some crap that's going to pop up. How you respond um, refers to, you know, your attitude and your display of how you're going to do it. Trust me. I've, I've been in some situations where I wanted to blow my top, where I wanted to reach out and choke somebody. Um, been in some situations where, things could have been very violent. Um, but again, I knew I wasn't going to get the actual uh, outcome I wanted by doing that. So sometimes you have to sit back, you have to take it all in um, and understand that you are in complete control of your attitude at all times. You know, I tell people it's about flipping the script. You get up in the morning, you're having a bad day. Um, you can change that instantly just by deciding to have a good day. Um, again, think of something positive, think of something something nice and you can change your attitude um, and you'll have a great day regardless of how you woke up um, that morning. And oh my goodness, um, a tip on leadership, a third one, I think it would be um, visualizing. Um, I think I think good leaders, great leaders, are individuals who can can see things that, <clears throat> as we talked about last night on our, our mastermind call, that others may not necessarily see. Um, you know, I know Dr. Obama mentioned it. You know, when he was talking about a 
a vehicle accident that someone may have. And even though the accident may take place in a split second, um, in our minds, we can recall every fiber of that almost in slow motion. Um, and I think, I think um, good leaders have the ability or can train themselves um, to look long term, you know, in slow motions, just slow things down around you so that you really get the big picture. It's almost like, you know, the movie being in the matrix, you know, sit down and really observe everything so that you get the full picture of it. And I believe that's how I was very successful in the military. Um, because I always saw the big picture and what was going on, um, not just at the level I was at. I was always looking two, three, four levels higher than me um, so that, you know, I can help them get to whatever the outcome was. So I think if you can, if you can see those things, you know, have the great attitude about it, um, you, know, you, you can go very far and then of course then you'll have people who will follow you or walk with you i like to say um, because i don't think you know, anyone really wants to be a follower but you want to walk with the the people you choose to walk with on the path that you choose to walk on wow wow okay i just Benny, i just need you to know if you didn't see it yourself that everyone including me when I had the time, I took my notes and I wrote the three things you said down because that was so much magic that you condensed and made simple to comprehend that we can all easily apply and continue to apply. So every single person on this, I had to take a picture. I took a screenshot because <laughs> literally everyone's like this, right? Looking down, taking notes. That was, ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing it here first from the most powerful global leadership speaker, author, coach, and trainer that has blessed and continues to bless so many of our lives by simply leading by example and, and leading from such a heart space um, centered place all the time. Like this is like, Steph would do this. She, she taught me how to do this, like mind blown, like moments, <laughs> right? It's like, oh my goodness. Does anyone have any questions for Venny or myself at this point, because I know we're getting close to the hour and I just want to honor you guys for, for being here live with us. Look how many people we have live on this call. This is amazing. And kudos to all of you for just coming to absorb the information and the, the energy that we, that we are so passionate about sharing with you. So if anyone has any questions, please let us know now. Um, Pasan in your heart. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, this is exciting. I, if I may, I, I want to encourage everyone to really pick up some of the, the golden nuggets that we're sharing in this call. I know there it's been filled with nuggets from Benny and he's been extrapolating the nuggets from my storytelling. So thank you, Benny, for doing that. You know, keep yourselves healthy, focus on your health because health is wealth right? Do things every single day. I know we fall off the wagon sometimes, right? We all do. We all have ups and downs. That's the way life goes, right? And the things that I prioritize in my life that help me stay strong mentally, emotionally, physically, um, financially, it all is interconnected. So when we think about leadership, the best way, and Venny is someone that has taught me this on so many higher levels than I understood before meeting him is that true leadership is really leading by example, right? So how can you become a better version of you? And I know that many of the health coaches on this call, many of the leaders on this call and listening to this call, it, they, they would agree when, when we say things like prioritize your nutrition, nutritional intake is huge right? Prioritize your physical activity and your movement, right? We've got thumbs up. The health coaches are going like this, right? I know I'm going to get a pat on the back for this after. Yay. Um, you know, prioritize things like your growth. Prioritize the people that are in your space to inspire you and that you're supposed to become a mentor to, right? Because again, the type of people we are, when one of us grows, the next person grows, and we just continuously grow together right as a team as a unit so Venny, i have a question for you sir <laughs> who is Venny cochran 
Ah. <laughs> Well, I, I think I touched on it a little bit at the at the beginning. Again, I I think I'm a a a very um, simple individual um, who really it believes I'm just here to help individuals, um, help individuals grow, um, help individuals thrive. Um, you know, I am a sponge, as I said a lot of times, for information. Uh, I'm a seeker of new information. Um, you know, I'm a you know I'm a father to my my wonderful son uh, Justin, um, who's out in New York living his dreams. Um, you know, husband to my beautiful wife, um, who we're we're in this together, um, and it's a it's an amazing thing. Again, you if if you can find that one person. Um, to latch on to that supports you in any and everything that you do, um, then that's, that's going to be your greatest asset, you know, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a spouse or someone like that, but there's someone out there um, that you, you have to identify with that is going to be there 100% for you. Um, and for me, I'm just lucky, you know, not only do I have that in my, you know, my wife, um, but I have it in my fam, my you know my my family members from birth, and then I have it in my family members here, you know that are on this call. So, you know, you know I'm I'm just that guy, you know I'm I'm that guy to to be here, you know to help and assist, and you know find individuals to help me along my journey because I'm still on it. Um, as I said, you know it's never going to stop. You know when when I am called home eventually. You know, I'm going to be reaching down, trying to help as many people as I can, um, because I believe that's again that that's what I'm here for. Um, I know we're we're running out of time a little bit, um, but I want to throw one thing out there before I want to bring our our host back on. Um, but three things I want to leave everybody with, if I may, is something that I, I read a long time ago, and I, I just rewrote it down earlier today. And I believe in order to be successful, you know, in leadership, um, but in life in general, um, I think there's three things that I think everybody needs each day. Um, and the first one is something to look up to. And for me, that's our Heavenly Father. Um, the second is something to look forward to. And for me, again, that's, that's family. Um, looking forward to, you know, relationships with family, um, regardless of what type of family it is. Um, and the third one is someone to chase and follow. Um, because if you, again, you want to be the leader that I think we all were put here for in one form or another, um, you, have to, you have to chase someone. You know, I have a lot of individuals I'm looking at on this screen right now, you know, that I'm chasing you know, in terms of leadership, in terms of growth and things like that. Um, so I think with those three things, if you can, you know, figure those three things out each and every day, you know, we'll all get to where we want to be. And with that said, um, before I turn it over to back to Obama and we run out of time, I just want to say, Fasana, it's always a pleasure, you know, you know, watching you grow in the last, or the little bit of time that I've actually known you um, has been incredible. I'm looking forward to more of these calls with you, uh, more trips with you, and you know the growth that we're all going to see. So with that, you know, Dr. Obama, thank you again. Um, back to you, my brother. <laughs> thank you, Vinny. <laughs> Congratulations on uh, no, for the rest of the family. It's just that um, you all are getting pieces of what I've spent years um, getting bigger beast pieces and bites from, and now almost a year with uh, Fasana going back and forth. And then, you know, it, it's cool when you when you get your favorite people in the world, you put them together. Earlier this year, you know, we've all kind of connected. But earlier this year, Vinny, myself, Robert, Fasana, uh, and a few other folks here, we went on a private jet mastermind and really got a little more connected with each other. So it's always going together. Um, before we close out here, so Buck asked a question. Another question before you guys go, how do you cope with failure and stress? So I'm going to give you kind of the, I'm going to give you, as we close out here, 
the leadership answer from a combat direction, right? My, my, my Marines always used to ask me this question, how do you deal with failure? And I says, if you're alive to ask him that question, you succeeded. <laughs> so every day that you have breath in your body, you did not fail. Today's a new day. That's why I wrote the book, Today's the Day. Today's the day to correct for the mistakes of yesterday, to correct for the mistakes of 10 minutes ago, a minute ago. You can always hold your tongue. You can always correct. You can always say, I'm sorry. You can always, well, mean it. Don't just say it. You can always mean that you're sorry by changing your actions and your attitude because your attitude more than anything will determine your altitude in life. And these two leaders that you heard from today is quite key and important. I'm sure they might echo the same thing, but know this, if you're ever asking yourself that question, especially when it comes to leadership or failure, if you're asking the question, you're already in the, on the right path, looking for the direction to go. So remember this, whenever anything happened in life and a question comes up, it's not the answer that matters. It is the actions you take because you can get the perfect answers but if you do not take action, it doesn't matter. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today. I'm going to bring my daughter on real quick to ask her who is the wonderful soul tomorrow at 1 p.m. that you get to hear from. Because just like leadership, you find the people that are better than you in certain things. And my daughter, Stephanie, better in keeping this in track than I am. So she's running that department. So I pass it over to her. So Stephanie, who tomorrow is going to be the most amazing soul on the Power Hour at 1 p.m.? Me, me. Yay, there you go. It's Kai. <laughs> awesome. Hi, so, Kai. My wife knows because she's chatting with Stephanie, and without any further ado, it's the pretty long hair guy that you see sitting in the chair, Mr. Adam J. Moss, the boss. But come on, come on, come on, right? Yeah, so Adam J. Moss, the boss. Where you at, Adam? Show your beautiful face before we go on. But I can't at the moment, guys, but I'm right here with you. I am so happy to be on tomorrow. I'm super excited to give you guys a ton of knowledge on corporate structures and strategies. I'm going to be bringing a whole new level to tomorrow's conversation to help as many people as I can run their business successfully, profitable, and with the most security and protection that they'll get anywhere. I'm really super excited about this, guys. The information is just going to blow some heads off. Awesome. And I can vouch for that because the last time this gentleman shared 15 minutes of information and had 45 minutes of questions. So if you're <laughs> looking to get your business in the right place and take more profits, you want to be on that call tomorrow. So with that, you guys take care. God bless you. And we'll see you all back again. Bye. Bye. Thank, Bye. You, Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you.